this is Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to go over some tips on how to deal with those patients who have difficult veins. As a nurse it is inevitable that on a daily basis you're going to encounter those patients that are difficult to draw blood from or start IVs and there's various reasons that this happens. Some reasons could be your patient's just severely dehydrated so those veins are not popping up or they have severe cardiac or renal disease. So what I wanna do is I wanna give you some tips on how to deal with those things. The first thing what you wanna keep in mind is that usually on most patients, they're gonna have something for you to use for drawing blood or starting an IV. Even though it doesn't look like it initially or the patient tells you, you know, I'm a really hard stick. But usually most patients will have something that you can access. So with these patients, you're really going to be going by palpation of that vein rather than actually seeing it. Like, you know, on patients who are healthy, they do a lot of cardiovascular exercise, those veins are nice and superficial at the surface. And once you apply that tourniquet, they just pop up there. But on patients who have bad veins, that doesn't happen. You'll put the tourniquet on there and those veins really just don't pop up as great as someone who has those nice and gorge veins. So you have to know, number one, the location of your veins. And in the adult, they're usually the same across the board like the median cubital, the accessory cephalic. You're just gonna find those in the same location. So be familiar where you can find these veins. Second, what you have to do is you have to practice filling veins. And veins feel very unique compared to other structures in the arm. So what I like to do is I like to take my index finger and I like to start filling all throughout that arm, the front, the back, everywhere I can, especially on these patients whose veins just aren't popping up because veins have a very unique feel in that they're squishy, but bouncy. And once you get the feel of what they feel like, you will never confuse it for other structures in the arm. But whenever you're first starting out, it's very foreign because, you know, I remember starting out and filling on an arm, I'm like, what is that? Is that a vein? And then my preceptor would be like, no, that's like a tendon or a ligament. I'll be like, oh, okay. So what you can do, what worked for me, is that I would take a tourniquet, apply it to my own arm, and I would feel my veins. Or I would use my husband or a friend or a family member, whoever was healthy who had great veins, and I would just feel throughout the arm and get comfortable with how that vein would feel. Next, you wanna use two things. You wanna use a tourniquet and gravity. Both of these things are going to benefit you greatly when trying to start IVs or draw blood on these people who have difficult veins. Because it's like the same concept with a water hose. Once you kink that water hose and put a lot of pressure on it, what does that water hose start to do? It starts to swell. And that's what these veins are going to do because we need that once we go in there to palpate to fill that swollen, squishy, bouncy vein so we can stick it. So what I like to do is I like to put the tourniquet on the upper arm, not too tight, but not too loose, just right. Have the patient drop the arm by the side and pump that fist. Just open and close that hand over and over. And this gives it time for that blood to pull in that lower part of the arm so you can increase your chances of getting a vein. And the thing is, it's really amazing how taking the time to just do those two simple things really does work. Now I worked in a stress lab for many years and right off the bat, whenever the patient comes to you for the test, they have to have an IV. And I would get a lot of patients who would tell me, you know, people hardly ever can stick me successfully. It takes multiple tries. I just don't have anything. And you know, looking at their arm initially, they really didn't have anything. But once I applied that tourniquet, used gravity for my benefit, it was just simply amazing what actually popped up and was available for me to use. It would shock me and shock the patient and we'd usually get it first try and the patient would be like, wow, that never happens. So always try to use those two simple things to help you with drawing blood and getting IVs. And lastly, you know, sometimes you can put the tourniquet on, you can use gravity all day, you can palpate all day, stick the patient, you're just not getting anything. And this is where you need to use those outside resources. There's vein lights available, maybe your unit has one that can help illuminate the vein so you can easily find it. Or in other situations, depending on what you have available at your facility, you can have ultrasound come ultrasound the arm, find that vein, and stick them for IVs. And places I've worked, we've had that. And 
I'll share a story with you. We had a patient coming in for a stress test and they were like, you know, I need a central line to have this test. And you know, going and getting a central line is expensive for the patient. There's risk of infection and all these issues just to have like this four hour test. Really an IV is the best route. So we called ultrasound, they came up, they ultrasound the arm and they found a vein. It was deep down in the bend of the arm, but there was a vein there. Started an IV, got it, person had their stress test and we saved them from having to get a central line and that was great. So always look and see what your hospital has available for those situations that do arise. But if you do have a patient, you know, you're just not getting anything on them, they're gonna be there because they're really sick, they need a lot of treatment with IV fluids, you probably wanna get with the physician, explain what's going on because that patient may be a candidate for a central line and do that instead. Okay, so that is what I like to do whenever I have those patients who have those difficult veins and I hope those tips help you out and be sure to check out my other videos on how to start IVs and tips on how to deal with those rolling veins and things like that. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos.